Thank you for that beautiful uh, prelude, Roxanne. We enjoy listening to you each week. And welcome to all of you uh, to our worship service uh, this bright and beautiful Sunday morning. God has sure blessed us with some beautiful days to have our outdoor worship. And also welcome to our Facebook uh, viewers. We're glad that you join us uh, each Sunday as well. Um, as always, we begin with our hymn of praise. So today we'll be singing, Lord be glorified. confess our sins before God and one another. Loving God, when our, our path, path becomes, becomes difficult, difficult, we do not, not always turn to you. We look for an easy way out. We escape from the avoidance and addiction. We forget your promises and seek what does not satisfy. Forgive us and bring us back into your strength and your spirit. God is generous and loving and forgiving. Hear and believe that your sins are washed away and that new life is yours in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have come to make immortal things visible through mortals. Use us and our lives to reflect your glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading for this morning comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul writes, Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have read renounced the shameful things that one hides, we refuse to practice cunning to, or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of, any, of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that by this extraordinary that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. 
We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Well, um, today we're going to try a, a, our children's message. And I usually have the children gather around the front, but we want to stay socially distant. So I'm going to ask the children to stay where they are. And um, just maybe move to a place where you can see. I have brought with me um, a couple of things that are very um, important in my life. These, these are two clay pots um, that were actually made by our daughter Nikki, uh, I think when she was in high school. Was this high school? Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're, very, they're very beautiful and they're very precious to me. And it, um, for you kids, you know what? You know, you can fill these pots with a lot of different things, can't you? Can you think of something that we could fill these with? What? Flowers. Flowers. Candy. Candy, that's for sure. What else can we fill these pots with? Yeah. <clears throat> Candy? No, keys. Keys? You can put your keys in it, that's right. What else could you put in it? You can put your toys in it, that's right. Well, your toys would be your treasures, right? I, I have one at home that I just put all my change in and put all my treasure in there. Yeah, what could you put in it? Hair ties. Your what? Hair ties. Hair ties. Hair ties. You could put hair ties in it. Water. Water and drink out of it. That'd be very important, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, this one here is really, really my favorite of all the things that my daughter made. And the reason it's my favorite is because if you look real closely at it, you can see all the cracks that are in there. Mm -hmm. See all the cracks that got covered up with the varnish and, the, and, they, and it's held together still, this, despite the fact that it has all those cracks. Can you guys see all these cracks? Look at the cracks that are in there. And yet it still holds together, doesn't it? Yeah, you can. Everybody, can you see the cracks that are in there? It's pretty, it's pretty amazing that this thing is still pretty solid. And it reminds me of our Bible uh, verses that I just read today, where um, St. Paul says that we have this treasure, but it's kept in a clay jar. And he's talking about the treasure of God's love that, we, that, that is inside of us. And we are the clay jars. And I, I love this so much because... Sometimes we feel a little bit cracked and broken, but God can still use us for any purpose that he wants to. He can fill us with his love, and, and, and we can pour that love out to other people. And that's what, that's what we're made for, is to pour that love out and share it with everybody. And, and here's a secret that I want to tell you guys, so don't tell anybody else. But the more you share the love that's inside of you that comes from God, the more you get. So you can never run out. Isn't that good news? You can never run out of the good gifts and the love that God has given to you. 
And I think that's something that we should all thank God for. So let, let's, um, let's say a prayer, and then we'll move on. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for creating us as your clay pots. And you are the potter, and we are the clay. We thank you for using us and filling us with your Holy Spirit and with your love. And we ask you to give us opportunities to be able to share that love that you've given to us. And to let us never be stingy with that love, but to always share. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and from the face of God's glory and our treasure, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're already into the third week of this sermon series on 2 Corinthians. I can't believe how fast summer is just flying by. If you haven't already noticed, as we read through the um, uh, scripture lesson for today, we skipped over chapter 3 and we moved on to chapter 4. In the part that we skipped over, Paul compared the Jewish faith, which is based on the laws of Moses, which guided their faith um, to salvation in those uh, times before Jesus, with the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. In his comparison, St. Paul laid out basic tenets of the Christian faith, concluding, though, that the gospel of the grace of God is for all people, and it is far superior than attempting to reach salvation by a keeping of the laws of Moses. So today, our examination of these verses from chapter 4 begins with Paul's further defense of his ministry that he is proclaiming. He wants the Corinthians to know, first of all, that he is an apostle only by the grace of God. This might be a line that we often just would skip over as we're reading through the scriptures. But I want to take a moment just to remember who St. Paul is and why people might be skeptical of his message and the sincerity of his ministry. Before Paul was Paul, his name was Saul, and he was a zealous Pharisee who persecuted this new faith called Christianity. In the book of Acts, Saul held the coats and stood by nodding his approval while an angry mob stoned St. Stephen to death. Stephen was Christianity's first martyr. Later, when he was on, the, on his way from Jerusalem to Damascus, where he intended to hunt down more Christians and have them killed, Jesus stopped Saul on the road dead in his tracks. And Saul was blinded by the brilliant light of Jesus. He was then sent into a nearby town for instruction and uh, was then given his sight back a little bit later after that. During this sort of conversion and commissioning, Saul's name was changed to Paul, but everyone still knew who he was and they remembered how much he wanted to put an end to this newfangled Christian fad. So before people even heard a single word about Jesus or the gospel, Paul had to convince them of his authority and his sincerity regarding the message that he wanted to proclaim to them. And so because he always talked about himself and he did that, some people misunderstood his message and accused him of making the gospel all about Paul. Another thing we need to remember is that Paul actually did suffer a great deal because of his proclamation of the gospel. He was beaten several times. He was arrested. He was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned for the sake of the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. And finally, in the end, he was beheaded outside the city walls of the city of Rome. Paul sacrificed so much to bring the message of God's grace to the Gentile world. It grieved him when people wrote him off and discounted his testimony and his witness about Jesus. No one likes to be written off. 
as if somehow you're flawed or incapable of change for the better. That's why it's so important to forgive the mistakes people make and focus on encouraging one another in positive ways. When children are, are very small, they make a lot of mistakes. If parents only focus on those mistakes and the missteps, most children will grow up to be very dysfunctional. It's called the self-fulfilling prophecy. Tell someone they're bad over and over and pretty soon, guess what, they turn out to be bad. On the other hand, tell them over and over again how good they are and you find positive things to reinforce about their good behavior and the exact opposite thing happens. Most of the time, they change for the better. Paul, I'm sure, had to deal with his former way of life when he was persecuting Christians. After he met the risen Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus, and after he became a believer, it took a lot of convincing to get those early believers to trust him at all. I'm sure quite a few people wrote him off. Even in his letters to the Corinthians, Paul still had to defend his role as an apostle, an eyewitness of Jesus, sent by Jesus to proclaim the good news of forgiveness through Jesus. Even though Paul had to defend himself, he made it clear that defending himself was not his main goal. He was there to preach Christ. As Paul said, we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Jesus is Lord. Paul is only his servant. Any reference Paul makes to himself had to be understood with these facts in mind. Jesus is the one who was present at the creation of the world. Jesus is the one who is true God. Jesus is the one who forgives us through his death on the cross and his resurrection. If there's any good in us at all, it's Christ working in us. Christ Jesus was Paul's sure defense Jesus forgave him and called him in spite of all that Paul had done. Jesus recreated Saul into Paul, and he makes us new as well. This is why Paul's words now shout out to us for joy, as they declare to you and to me that the God who said, let there shine light out of darkness, made this light also to shine in all of our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that we see in the face of Jesus. God's light shines in every one of you. Now further, God did not and has not and will not ever write any of you off. He has not given up on us, even though we may be tempted to give up on ourselves. I know I've been tempted to write myself off so many times, saying, this is just the way I am. I can't ever amount to anything. I'll never be good enough. I'm like the pottery in the Old Testament, where the potter throws it away and smashes it. I just can't break my wicked habits. It's easy for us to imagine God has already given up on us. That there's no hope. And yet, God can get pretty far with a cracked old clay pot. The little translation in the Greek is actually earthen vessel. You do a lot with an earthen vessel. Pot made from the dust of the earth. We may feel like we've been flattened and crushed and torn, but as Paul said, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and it's not from us. The power that Paul's talking about is the power of love and the power of forgiveness. 
I get the impression that Paul is talking about clay pots that haven't been dried in a kiln, like these ones I showed this morning. They're still bendable. They're still able to be formed and molded and shaped by the potter, even though the process may be painful at times. Reminds me of the saying, God hasn't finished with me yet. He's not written me off, and he's not written you off. Paul continues by saying, we're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Those are some pretty amazing words, considering all the hardships he's been through. On the one hand, they clear up this false notion that a lot of um, preachers... Uh, propagate today uh, that nothing bad ever happens to Christians, that once you become a Christian, your life is all technicolor uh, wonderful. On the other hand, they show us that there's more to life than we can see with our eyes or even understand with our minds. Even if we should die as believers, we're not abandoned or destroyed. God is willing to bring us home for the sake of his only begotten son, our Savior. Paul was writing under the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And when he did, he's able to identify some of the reasons for his suffering. He's a clay jar with a purpose, he says, and so are we. It's the ultimate example of what's being inside that counts. Our outward distress, our outward weakness, even to the point of death, only serves to emphasize the treasure within, the life of Christ, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, the power of Christ's forgiveness, and the awesome wonder of his love. We're just pottery, so to speak, but inside we're given this great treasure the gift of faith to believe in and to trust in a Savior who stubbornly refuses to write us off no matter what we've done. We believe in him and we trust in him. It's not our wisdom or our strength or our power. Rather, we declare the glory of God. We kneel down in our weakness so that others can see Jesus. We appear ordinary in order that others can see how extraordinary God's love is in Jesus Christ. Yep, I believe God can go pretty far with an old broken clay pot. Clay is pretty special. Not because of what it is, but because of what comes into it from the outside. Because of what it can hold. It can be used to make containers for some pretty special things. In the waters of holy baptism, God has filled us with his spirit, gives us the faith that we have in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And God puts his name on us and says, I will never write you off. Maybe your life feels like a cracked and broken clay pot from time to time. The good news is that God can fix even broken pottery. Remember, God can go pretty far with a clay pot. Jesus took on our humanity. He entered this world as one of us. He knows what it's like to be a jar of clay. He knows what it's like to be tested by every kind of trial. He knows what it's like to be crushed, to be broken, and yes, even to be forsaken. He did all of that for you. So the potter could know his pottery inside and out. So the potter could love his pottery inside and out. You are special. Not just because I say you're special, 
but because of what God has put into you. With his strong and yet loving hands, God is forming you as the person who is already forgiven, already made new, into the person, the servant, he wants you to be. We have this treasure in jars of clay, and it's just waiting to get out. May your treasure be set free. And may you allow God's glory, the shining face of Jesus, to be seen in you. Amen. And now we um, respond to God's word by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church and all those who are in need. When we feel weak, it is then that you make us strong in your spirit sufficient for the tasks you have given to us. Teach us to lean on your unfailing strength, God of power. Guide all parents and those who serve as guardians for children and other vulnerable people. Give them wisdom to love, mentor, and prepare their loved ones to be kind and wise adults. God of power. Hear our prayer. Just as our bodies are constantly renewed and healed, so the earth renews itself with new growth out of the old, producing new life out of death. Make us partners in the restoration of creation that all may live and thrive in peace. O God of glory. Hear our prayer. It is frustrating, O Lord, when our physical bodies no longer do what we wish they could, or what they once were able to do. Give us your serenity and to accept our changing nature and to find new and joyful ways of adapting and living into the realities of this life. We continue to pray to you for help in coping with this COVID-19 crisis. Please speed a vaccine and heal all those who are afflicted. Grant wisdom to all those in authority to know how to reopen schools and businesses without increasing the spread of this pandemic. Give each of us the determination to continue doing all those things that help mitigate the spread of this disease. Help us to stay socially distant while at the same time feeling connected to our community. Send your healing power this day to all those who are sick or suffering in every way, especially we lift before your throne of mercy, our dear sister Sharon, our brother Jim. We thank you for the healing that you brought in Barry's life. We ask you to continue that healing. We lift up Karen and Theo, and we ask for healing in their life and their situation. We pray for Sarah and John, and we ask you to relieve their anxieties. We lift up PJ, and we ask for healing in her eye. O oh God of power, hear our prayer. As Timothy, Titus, and Silas dedicated their lives to your mission, so may we find our joy in serving you with the best we have been given. O oh God of power, hear our prayer. You are our treasure, O oh Lord, and in you we place our trust. Hear these prayers and strengthen us to keep serving you day by day for the sake of Christ. And everybody says, 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. Um, at this time, normally we would collect our offering, but I would ask that, um, you know, sometime during the time before you leave, socially distance yourself and, and uh, make use of the um, offering uh, container over there. Um, and so we'll pray for the offering that we do receive. Let's pray. Accept and bless the gifts which your children present to you in gratitude for the blessings which you have also given to us. May our time on this earth be spent in service to your world in need and in glory to you. Amen. Um, Jesus is the... Did I skip the announcements? Maybe we didn't put announcements in here. Yeah, after the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Well, I'm going to do the announcements now while you're still sitting. Um, there's just a few. Um, I, it's hard for me to tell from up here. I hope you guys are all maintaining your six feet socially distancing from each other. Um, especially uh, the message that it sends when our Facebook camera turns around and watches us pray and sing together. Um, I, wanna, I don't want to give the wrong impression to people in the world that, you know, we're too close. So please police each other and keep yourselves uh, going socially distance apart. Um, next week, we'll begin our first time of having communion uh, together in this format. Um, if it's a nice day like this, I will probably have the communion elements set up on a table out here. If there's any breeze at all or wind... I'm going to have it set up inside, and I would ask that uh, when you arrive, socially distance again, uh, take enough communion, they'll be individually uh, wrapped in, in Ziploc baggies, uh, with one, one person's communion in each baggie, so you just take however many you need for your family, and then take those at the beginning, so that way we don't have to take time during the middle of the service to hand them out. Um, and then when it comes time, I will bless, the, bless them, say the words of institution, and we'll all partake of the communion at the same time. Uh, those uh, elements of communion, uh, they will be prepared uh, this week well in advance um, with sanitary measures being taken, sanitizing the surface that they're prepared on, uh, wearing gloves and uh, masks and so forth. Uh, and then they'll be placed inside Ziploc baggies so that um, they'll be safe for everybody. So that's coming up by way of coming attractions for next Sunday. Um, I believe uh, that today is the day we're going to actually kick off our home vacation Bible school. And uh, Miss Marge is going to be handing out vacation Bible school home kits uh, that she has prepared for us. And... Um, you can collect those, for one for each child, uh, as you leave. Now, for our Facebook uh, viewers, if uh, you are unable to be here today and you have children, um, just either call uh, the office or call me or call Miss Marge, and we'll make sure that we um, can get one of those kits delivered to you for your children. Are there any other announcements that we need to make for the good of the congregation? If not, then I would ask you to stand for the Lord's Prayer. We remember that Jesus is the tie that binds us together. And so we pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And we'll now sing our sending song, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
for coming this morning. Uh, and thank you to our Facebook uh, viewers today for joining us. And uh, you, you may now depart in Christ's love. Seeking, welcoming, welcoming, and, and serving, serving all. all. Amen. Amen.